Today I'm working on a very familiar device. It's the same phone that films these repair videos, a Galaxy S21 Ultra. This one took a nasty hit in the bottom right corner and has spider webbed with hairline cracks throughout the glass. Thankfully, the back is intact. The back glass is pretty cool and flows into the camera lenses. The raised metal frame offers a bit of extra protection. It opens however you want, no hidden ribbons. Five Samsung standard Phillips head screws and two little Lego connectors secure the wireless charging pad. Then it can peel away. That D-brand skin is pretty cool, but the real thing looks awesome. Disconnecting the battery is pretty important. Then you can go wild disconnecting almost everything else. This long Lego connector is typically found on Galaxy Notes. It's a special digitizer layer for the S Pen, which is now supported by the S21 Ultra. Four more Phillips screws are holding in the bottom loudspeaker. Prying from the left top corner seems to be the standard for a lot of manufacturers these days. Samsung even has that helpful little arrow. At the top, there are four more screws to remove for this top loudspeaker. This speaker is a bit gross, to say the least, but stuff finds its way inside eventually. Pop the selfie camera flex, then one final screw holds the ultra-wide camera and more or less the whole board to the frame. It can then be pulled up and out of the housing. This stacked logic board with multiple PCB layers is becoming a new industry standard. I'm all about it. This year we have a new 3x optical camera lens. It's got a broad range optical stabilizer. It helps bridge the gaps between 1 and 10x zoom without looking like JPEG puke. The main wide 108 megapixel is still here, and the ultra wide now has autofocus, allowing it to double as a macro camera. The charging port is firmly wedged into the housing. It can be pulled up and out. The strange antenna at the top is secured by an astounding seven tri-wing screws. I think one or maybe two would have been sufficient. I'll transfer over the selfie camera. Then it's time to disconnect the big 5G block antennas. I'll get those swapped over to the new frame. Then I can drop in the main logic board. The charging port gets wedged back into the frame. It's pinched between the charge port hole and a metal standoff. Replacing the three-part mid-frame is easy enough. Just make sure everything's plugged back in. I'll power the phone on to make sure everything still works. So far, so good. The back panel is super easy to line up thanks to the raised metal frame by the camera bump. And this one is all fixed up and ready to go. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.